Okay, so now we're talking about my thing. Your baby. SEO, search engine optimization. And what that is, is it's your keywords. And think about the internet. The internet is nothing but a giant database, right? Websites are just in a database. They're on the internet. Google is just a da database. It's all based on words, and those are the keywords. So, what are your big questions? Because I know you have some I have questions. You have questions. Right, because SEO know. is really not my thing. I just come to you. <laughs> so, at 40,000 feet, what would be your best question for what SEO is? Okay, so probably my, my very first question is, and you've already answered what it is, so where am I going to put it? Okay. So SEO goes in your web pages. Okay. That's very important. It also goes in your Google Plus description and your links. So let's talk okay. about links. So if you have a link, you don't want your link to be on click here. You want your link to be on a set of keywords that helps your website. Oh. Okay. So if you're writing a page and you're saying, oh, if we were writing a page about this event, right. and we said uh, Denver, Re Denver um, Marketing Training, click here, the link back to our website would be click here keyword. Okay. But if we link it to Denver Marketing Training, then the link back would be to those keywords. Does that make sense? Ah, I yes, see, I yeah, saw the light go off. went on too. Okay. <laughs> so, Google Plus is amazing because you're, you're putting it right in the heart of Google. YouTube is owned by Google, so you can put your keywords when you SEO your uh, videos, you can SEO your videos. Okay. You can, um, it looks like LinkedIn is getting a little bit oh. better with their, um, you can write an article in LinkedIn and mm -hmm. some of those get indexed. Some of the Google Notes get indexed, or okay. excuse me, the Facebook Notes get indexed. Um, functionally, anywhere you go, you want to try to use the words that are actually in your site. Think about this, you guys. If you have your Facebook hooked to your Twitter, which I do, so anything I post on Facebook goes to Twitter. I just noticed it today. I posted a really cute picture of like some kind of leprechaun-y thing, and I said, so cute, and I posted it. And I went, oh, nobody on Twitter is actually going to click on that and look at it because they have no idea what it is. They're not sitting there bored wondering what Tara thinks is so cute. If I'd have put, oh my gosh, what an amazing St. Patty's Day uh, cartoon, what you want to start doing is using your words. That's really important. Okay? So. So another question that I would have for you is, okay, so I know that and you guys, I just, uh, this is really a struggle for me. Um, so I know I want to be using my keywords and stuff, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Uh, how many times am I going to use them, though? Okay, easy peasy. So when you're using your keywords, first off, you used to see those websites that would say, for social media in Denver, you need to check out the Marketing and Media Monsters because they do social media in Denver and their social media Denver information is better than, and like everybody in here is rolling their eyes going, cool. okay. That's called keyword stuffing. Oh. And two Google updates ago, they said no keyword stuffing. They okay. Don't want us to stuff. They don't want you to stuff. They want to. So let's talk a little bit about keywords and, and who Google's customer is. Google is an amazing company that you can buy ads from and they don't give a shit about you. Just saying it. They just, just don't. Just saying it. Their customer is the searchers. So their goal is to make sure that people who are searching find what they wanted to find. That's their only reason for being. So if you're coming to a page full of nothing but gibberish, they aren't going to like that. If you're coming to a horrible article or just a sales page and they haven't asked for a sales page, they're not going to like it. And they're going to, it's called bouncing. They go, they come, they look, they bounce. They go back. Google doesn't like that. So, how many times should you use it? We like to call it a sandwich, okay? okay. You're going to use it in your title. So if you go tonight and do a search on Google for a keyword phrase, so say you're going to do a search for um, Denver networking groups. Okay. When you come up in Google, the ones who's had in the title Denver networking groups are going to come up faster than anybody else. 
the ones that have it in the URL, so if it's marketingartfully.com forward slash Denver Networking Groups, those are going to come up next. Okay. Then you're going to have the ones that have it in your description. So you have title, description. Then a couple of times in your headlines. So all this stuff that we're using to break up, we can use it, that phrase in your headlines again. And then at the very end, that's your second half of your sandwich, you put it there. And you want to have a ton of content in the middle that has nothing to do with your keywords. Okay? Because there's no specific ratio. Google will not tell us a ratio like 10% or 5% or whatever. But they will see if you're doing nothing but putting a ton of keywords in there, they'll know it. They and don't they like, won't like it. They don't like it. They won't like you. They don't like it at all. Well, and one thing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one thing that I know to be true is the things that I will look for, things that I try to find are rarely ever the actual name oh. of people's businesses. Okay, so this is how do you pick your keywords. Okay. Okay, so we did a search the other day. We were trying to figure out was something about marketing groups or marketing teams or marketing something. What you want to do is never guess. So you want to go to Google and you want to type in Google external keyword tool. Okay? And what that'll do is it'll take you to part of AdWords, but it's where you can do all your searches for your keywords. And then you want to take your keywords and put them in there and see what's more popular. Because do you think that Clearwater Realtor or Clearwater Realtors is more popular? Realtors. Most Clearwater Realtors talk about themselves in the singular. Oh, I am a Clearwater Realtor. But when you're looking for something, we wouldn't look up a Denver painter, right? A single painter. We would look up Denver painters uh -huh. instead to find Larry. So it's never what you think. So it's never what you think. And so you never want to guess. Oh my gosh, my favorite one is my headlines versus um, subject lines. Oh. I write email subject lines. In my head, I'm writing email subject, the best email subject lines. So I wrote this big, huge, long blog post with it in there about 10 times. And then I thought, oh, shoot, I have to go check. Well, email subject lines are searched about 10 times a month. And email headlines are searched about a million times a month. So had I made that one little mistake and left it as subject lines instead of headlines, I would have gotten a fraction of the traffic that I would normally get. So it's really, really important. Subtle difference there. It is a subtle difference. Okay, you want to talk about buying keywords versus searching keywords. Yes. Okay? Yeah, because I really don't understand the difference. So. Okay. So I'm if, learning today too. I know. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, so if you're searching for a dentist in Denver, okay, you're just at the very beginning of your search. If you're moving from somewhere else and you're looking for um, homes in Denver or any of those types of things that you're doing, that's going to be very early on in the search. Now we do recommend that you have a database and you capture them early in the process. But as far as keywords go, there's a progression. So you're doing Dentist Denver's. Um, and then the next would be, how about Dentist Reviews? Okay, so the next one, now you're getting a little bit more specific. So now I want to know about some of these dentists. And the next one would be Dentist Westminster. So I don't actually live in Denver, I live in Westminster. So now I'm getting even more specific than that 40,000 feet. And then the last one is searching for Dr. Kowalski or whatever the heck my dentist. My dentist is lovely, but he has a funny name. I don't know it. <laughs> so that's huge. And we were laughing earlier because we have people that come oh. to us all bright and shiny and say, but I have the whole first page of Google oh. for their company name. Because okay. that's what they've searched for in their search bar. Right. So we'll talk in a little bit about Google Universal Search, but that's how you want to pick what search terms, where they are in the sales process, and what they want to buy. So you want actually a mix of that. You don't want, I mean, it would be wonderful if we could all know exa exact buying terms yeah. so that we could only scoop up people who are ready to buy, but you really need a mix across that. Are you ready for Universal I'm ready. Search? I'm ready. Hit okay. Me. We're going to talk about Google Universal Search. 
10 years ago when Google started, you would get 10 results, ranked 1 to 10, okay? Then they started having local search, okay? So now you would have like the three local ones at the top and then seven results. And then they started putting news results at the bottom of the page. And then they started including videos in it and all of that. So things for you to think about is I, sur I watch videos a lot on the, on the Google, okay? So I, I often, if there's a video result, I will pick the video result. I get more video results. Rebecca doesn't watch as many videos, so on her results page, she doesn't get very many video results. I never read the news, ever. Like I'm banned from it, my husband won't let me because I have like little nervous breakdowns over the horrible things that happen. So in my results, I never get news. Somebody who reads news would get results. So that's why you need to mix up your information across a variety of different platforms. If you have a walk-in business, you want to be on Google Local. If you have a, if you're able to make videos about your business, you want to have videos that are keyworded to your, your main keywords. You want to do some news things. You want to do some press releases. You want to have as many of your listings on there as possible. And then Google Plus, okay? Google Plus is quite frankly the worst social network in America. Nobody really, it's not a good, it's not Facebook, like it's none of your friends are there. Just you and me. Yeah, we're, it's we're us. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? If you go home and do a search for any search term, some of the results that come up are going to be posts from Google Plus and people who have circled or you have circled them. So I cannot get on page one for small business marketing to save my life. I've been trying for four years. I'm still on page three. I'm not probably ever going to get there with my website. But I can get there for everybody who circled me. I can get there with a video maybe. I mean, I'm in marketing. Everybody competes against me because we're all in marketing, <laughs> right? right? That's just what we do. Um, but that allows you to get such a higher level ranking just by using some of these tricks in universal search. Okay. All right. That's well, and the reason we felt so strongly we really needed to address this is because, as she was saying before, we have a lot of people that we work with that are very excited because they think that they're ranking so high in Google. And what people don't understand, and we, we use Google because that is the most popular search engine, that's the, the thing people use the most. There are other ones out there, but for for most of our stuff, we are going to talk about the Google. And what happens, and this is what people really don't get, is when they're at home in front of their computer and they're doing a search term for their own business, the first thing they put in is their business name. So first of all, if people don't know what your business name is, I guarantee you they're not looking for it. Okay, they're not plugging that into their search bar. Um, and then the other thing is that Google will pull the information it shares with you based on the geographical location of your IP address, which is where your computer is sitting, and the people that you are connected to on social platforms. So if you're getting on the Facebook or you're, you have a, a Google Plus profile page or things like that, the information that's going to feed to you is based on who you're connected to, who's in your address book, and who's the closest to you in your neighborhood. Tara and I could live across the street from each other, do a search in, in a Google browser for the same search terms, and get two completely different sets of results based on who we're actually connected to, what our past searches have been, and some things like that. But people don't really kind of understand that going into it. And that's why the, the keywording and the SEO is so important because if you're not plugging in exactly what people are looking for, you're just further and further and further away from being at a place where they're gonna see you. And what is it now? It used to be people would go to the first page, look through the first 10 results. And they might go to the second page. The they're second not page. going to the second. Because Google keeps getting better. They keep getting better at serving up results that are relevant. So now very few people actually have to go to that second page. So if you're not on the first page for it, you're probably not going to be found. You're not. And so it's good, it's, it behooves you, it's good practice for you to kind of understand, do, do a survey if you have to, of what your customers or people who would work with you are looking for when they're looking for you because I have a networking company and I would have assumed 
that what people look for is networking, that's not what they're looking for. What they're looking for when they plug in their search terms are things right. like, where can I sell my products, small business support groups, um, coffee meetings in Denver, MLM this, or marketing whatever. They're not actually looking for networking groups. So if I'm using that as my main keyword or one of my main, I mean, sure, I need to have it in there because functionally that's what I do. But if that's not what my people are looking for, I'm not helping myself by having that in there. And it's symptoms. It's totally you that's it. your symptoms of what they want to do. If you know you want a social media marketing company, you know to come look for me. But most people don't know what that's, that's what they need. They know they need help with Facebook there or they go. need to know how to, how to do social media. And then what I need to do is give them so much information about it and let them know how hard it's going to be and how time consuming it is that all of a sudden they go, oh gosh, now I need a social media marketing company. And this is why I say, I do want you to get them in your database really far up front because I, if they come to my site and get lots of information or are in my database and then leave, I'm fine because I still have the ability to market to them. But if I'm not data capturing them, then I'm just giving them a ton of great information. They're moving on and buying from somebody else. Yeah.